so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19 In every period of time, in every kingdom of man, Satan has labored hard to snuff out the word of God. But the Almighty God is no spectator. He keeps his words pure in all ages and raises up his army to proclaim and defend his perfect word. And so, in God's good time, the Far Eastern Bible College of Singapore was founded for this very purpose, a spiritual safety holding forth the word of life. It all began 50 years ago, 1962. 9A Gilstead Road, the birthplace of the Far Eastern Bible College, was set to be the location for the proclamation of God's everlasting decrees. God provided the place, a spacious, sylvan site, to be the bastion of truth in the Far East. Slowly but surely, the building began to take shape and FEBC was ready to be opened. The Reverend Paul Contento noted, Without the Bible College, the church will die. So the college was founded in 1962, 17th of September when our life church by that time was almost built not this part but the back part the air and the church but one year before that 1961 i started the evening theological class for one year in princess street church and i had 15 students but by 19 62, 17th of September, when they opened here, for full-time students, we had three. Two from Batu Pahat and one from Singapore. From Batu Pahat is Ng Seng Chiu and Eddie Chan. Both of them were teachers. They gave up their teaching job. And Ivy was also a teacher, my wife. She was one of our two first girl students and we started by announcing a four-year program granting a BTH to the chagrin and anger of all Singapore church leaders said this young upstart he wants to grant a degree when Singapore Bible College did not grant a degree yet they were only on the diploma and I was announcing a degree program So we had brickbats thrown at us from all quarters so that by the end of the year, two left. So I had only one student. Ng Seng Chiu went to study in Hong Kong Alliance Seminary. Eddie Chan went to join Bible, Singapore Bible College. And Ivy Tan was going to leave also. But the Lord did not give her the liberty. So she felt restrained. So she stayed on. So, by the end of the year, we have one student left. As I was going up my parsonage, by that time I was studying in the, in the church, I wept. I said, Lord, I know, I didn't know it's so hard. Three students become one. If I knew this, I would not have started the college. So, would the college sink? So burdened was the Reverend Timothy Toe that while he was sitting lonesome in the train from Singapore to Kuala Lumpur in 1966, he penned the college anthem in tears, crying out to the triune God to save the college. God answered his prayers, and indeed the college was brought through its first stormy wave. In that same year, the first Far Eastern Bible College convocation was successfully held.
Just as the college was picking up momentum, a dissentious spirit set in. This spirit of dissension arose from the worldwide success of Billy Graham, who, in the name of winning the world for Christ, joined hands with liberals, modernists, and unbelievers. Does not the Bible command, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers? Reverend Toe sounded out the alarm against the new wave of cooperative evangelism by speaking and writing against it. Subsequently, the same dissentious spirit sought to halt the launch of a three-story church and college extension, even though it was approved in February 1968. But who can resist the will of God? God's good hand was upon his own work, and a gift of $50,000 was received for the $120,000 project, which was taken as a sign of the Lord's approval. However, problems of administration increased as the college and church family grew. Something had to be done. We felt that it was not safe to go on in such a close relationship. College and church. For that moment it was alright because my brother, I call him Big Brother, he was pastor and principal of college. As long as this held and the people were happy, things would go on. But we need something on paper, in black and white, to say that this is agreed. And so an agreement was drafted and all agreed. Two representatives of church, two representatives of college signed and I was the chief witness as the chairman. So that's how that agreement came to be drawn up. The agreement says certain parts of the property will be used by the college, pre-informed to the church. At that time, there was no conflict, no argument. The agreement was simple, fair and free and both sides happily agreed and signed. Little did anyone know that this 1970 agreement would resurface in the future. Soon after, a deadlier wave crept into the Bible Presbyterian movement and this became a heated debate at the 7th Annual BP Conference at Cameron Highlands, September 7th to the 11th, 1987. When we came to a head in 1988, then the young Quick Sui Hua stood up to stand for charismatism. And he says that uh, these are meaningful, ecstatic utterances. But we say that this is jabbering and it is not the work of the Holy Spirit. So that's how the split came. 1987 to 88, there were many meetings to try to reconcile each other, but it just could not be reconciled. And in fact, I predicted to Rem Quick, I said, the Synod will be split, as you'll see. And by 1988, October 30, we split. The good result is that we are no more running a three-legged race. You know, running a three-legged race and instead of four legs and uh, two legs each freely, you now go, uh, you got to work together in an unequal yoke. In the use of the Bible, we stick to the old King James as the authorized version, the good version, but then they change all to NIV which is a corrupt version. And so, 
the faculty of FEBC defended the King James Bible for the next decade or so. But it was just the calm before the storm. Then very soon in 2002, FEBC faced her fiercest and longest battle ever in her history. But... You look at how God helped us, that is FEBC. We were told so many times, don't talk about doctrine from day one. The arena to talk about doctrine is not the court of men. Do you want to talk about doctrine? You do it within your four walls. And so we were told from the very beginning by our own lawyers, don't talk about doctrine. So in the affidavits that we submitted, the doctrinal defense was nearly minimum or zero only make statements what is VPP, what we understand VPP to be, that's it. There was no long treaties of papers of the papers, defending, explaining, quoting Bible verses, none of these. And then we lost the case at the High Court. And then we appealed. And then when the appeal court came out and the judgment of the decisions of the High Court judge against FEBC was overturned. And lo and behold, doctrines was the key. And God used three judges, none of them theologians, and they did research and they used doctrine as the basis to argue why FEBC has always been the same FEBC from her very inception. The issue was very simple. Is the doctrine of verbal plenary preservation a new doctrine whereby FEBC ceases to be a Christian Bible college training pastors and Christians by believing that the Bible is perfect. Does that mean that FEBC ceases to fulfill its original purpose, which was to train Christian pastors? And the answer was obviously no. Since the Westminster Confession of Faith is found in our Constitution, the judges concluded that the doctrine of VPP was not in any way inconsistent with what Westminster Confession of Faith has stated pertaining to kept pure throughout the ages, the very Word of God. And for that, they overturned the judgment and the FEBC won the case. FEBC has been preserved of God, being raised of God, the Lord has seen fit to protect, preserve and provide for this institution because it is one of the last remaining bastions of truth left in the world. Do you know that even a big institution like Bob Jones University has fallen away in the matter of Bible versions? They have declared in no uncertain terms all versions of the Bible are good, and that is disastrous. This declaration is contrary to truth. Looking back at the past 50 years at every struggle, God upholds his banner of truth, whether it be criticism, ecumenism, charismatism, or Bible preservation. The battle for the Bible will continue to rage on. The army of Christ has to march on. We, the soldiers of the cross, must love God's word and obey it with all our hearts. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Psalm 138, 2.